While working with Stata, I am sure we all have used the do files. And in this video, we are going to cover some tips that would enhance our experience of the do files. So let's get started. The do file should always start with the version command. We just write the version command and then the version number of Stata using which we are writing the code. In my case, say I am using Stata 13, then I will have to add the command version 13, which I have added in this case. If in your case you are using some other version of Stata, then you would put that specific version number. This line would ensure that any do file written in the older version of Stata would still work in the newer version. Say for example, I wrote a command in version 13 and when I update it to version 16, that specific command was not supported by the updated version or the syntax had changed. Then using this command would ensure that the commands would be executed as they would had been executed in the previous version. Do not fall into the trap of leaving this issue for future if you encounter an error because after few years when you would encounter the error, you might not remember which version you used to write the do files. Add a header. Always add a header to the do file with the information that would help you understand later on what this do file is about. So you can add the project title, the description, the data set used by the do file, the author who created or modified the file or some other information that you think is necessary. Use relative paths. To understand what relative paths are, we first need to understand what absolute paths are. Absolute paths are when we give the exact location of a file. So in this example, I have given the exact location to the data1 and the data2 file. Now you would think we need to tell Stata where a file is stored and what's the issue with that? Yes, we need to tell Stata the location where a file is stored, but in a different way. Let me narrate what is the issue with absolute path. If you share this file with your co-author or any other person, they might not save it in the exact location as you have saved them. Say they might save the files in the C drive or in different folder. In that case, they would have to change all the locations given in the do file. And this is not just true for sharing the file. You might have to run them on a different system by yourself or you might have to save them on an external drive. Absolute paths are the most common mistake. The alternative is to use relative paths. There are two methods that we can use relative paths and whichever method you choose is a matter of a personal experience. The first method uses the change directory command. In the first method, we set a working directory using this change directory command, the cd command. So we set the project one folder as our working directory. We just tried the cd command and the project folder location that we are currently working on. In subsequent commands, we just have to give the path relative to our working directory, that is the project1 folder. The data2 file is in the example folder within the project1 folder. But again, the path till the project1 folder had been taken care of by the cd command in this case. We just have to write the location from there on. By doing so, in future we just have to change the one command that is the cd command and the rest would be taken care of. The second method uses the global variable. The global variable is used to define a variable. In this case, we are going to define a path variable and store the location of our project1 folder in the path variable. So we write the command global, then the word path, and then the location of our current folder. From there on, we just have to add the path variable with the dollar prefix before the file name to indicate the folder location. As with the first method, in future if we change the location, we just have to update it in the global command. Stata don't mind spaces and indentations and we shouldn't too. Stata ignores spaces and indentations. So if we add spaces or indentation, they would 
not affect the code but they would make the reading of code quite easier. So in this following example, it might be harder to see which command comes within the loop. But in this example, we can clearly see the display command is indented and it is within the loop. This is the right way to do it. Set more off. When you execute a whole do file, the output of the do file won't fit the output window of the stata and you might see these click more options that you would have to keep on clicking so that the do file would execute completely. They are annoying and when working with do files we just want to click an execute button and want the whole file to be executed. You can set them off by using the set more off command and this would switch off the more link. Now you wouldn't see them but once you restart the stata program they would come back. So you might want to switch them off permanently and you just need to add the permanently option after this command. Now when you restart the stata the more link would not appear. You can switch them on by using the same command but this time instead of using the word off use on. Master do file. It is always a good idea to have a master do file and all the other do files nested within the master do file. So in this case I have different do files. The first do file is used to unzip my files. Then I have do file to analyze stock data. Then for sector data, index data and announcement data. A master do file is just a do file which is used to run another do file. So in this case to run the sector data do file I use the do command and then write the file name that I want to execute. Remember within a single do file we can call up to 1000 do files. So within this master do file I can have up to 1000 do files. We can have 64 levels of nesting. A stock do file executed by the master do file is a two level of nesting. If the stock data do file in turn executed another do file then that would be a three level of nesting. Log files. Log files are different from do files. Log files just store anything that appears on the output window of the stata. If we use the log command at the start of the do file it would start recording the log and we can share that log with our co-authors or can be used for future references. Stand alone do file. A do file will be called stand alone if it can be executed without any human intervention. So if we have written a do file in a way that it would load the dataset, execute a bunch of command and then save the output and we just have to execute the do file to have all this happen then this is a stand alone do file and that is what we want to do. Grouping commands. It is recommended to group commands that are of similar nature. So in this case if we are generating a bunch of variables then we group these generate commands together. We have another group of command that are used to rename variables. We can separate them through spaces. Later if we wanted to see how we generated a specific variable then we know that command would be in this generate group. Do not abbreviate too much. Abbreviations are good and they help us write commands quickly. Saves us time. But don't abbreviate too much. For example the generate command can be written as generate or gen or the shortest form would be simply writing the word g. We or other reading this do file would have difficulty understanding what this g means. In this case gen would be a better option. Different file name for output and input. The input data file name should be different from output data file name and that is to make sure that our original files are intact. In case we made some mistake we might want to use the original file and we might need the original files 
for some other projects. That's why using a different input and output file name is a better idea. Closing the log file. We have already seen that the log files are of quite useful, but before getting back to log files, let me first explain an issue with the do file. The issue with do files is that they would stop execution as soon as they hit an error. We want the do files to keep on running. Now coming back to the log files, to close the log file, the command log close is used. But sometimes it generates an error when the log file is not open or we have mistakenly closed it. To cater for this problem, we want to add the capture command before the log close command. The capture suppresses a command that generates an error. So in this case, if the log close command generates an error, the capture command would suppress the log close command and move forward and the do file would keep on executing. If we have more than one command where we want to use capture, then we can use them in parentheses like in this case. Organizing the folder. Normally, I have a separate folder for each project. And within that, the project folder, I keep all the data files in the data folder, the do files in the do folder. I sometimes have files that I am temporarily using or they are raw files and wouldn't fit in any folder. For them, I have a raw folder and the output such as tables or graphs are stored in the results folder. Numbering the do files. I always add a number before the do file that would help me understand in which sequence these files would be executed. Now in this case, I know that first this file would be executed and any output or file generated by this first file would be used as an input in this second file. If I didn't have these numbering, then I don't have any way of knowing in which sequence these files would be executed. Also, instead of having a single do file for your project, have them divided in multiple do files. It makes it easier to debug or identify any error in the do files. Commenting the do files. We should have more comments than the commands in our do files. Think of them as an investment. If you needed these files few years down the road, you would have to waste couple of hours to understand what these commands are used for. Comment now and save yourself from future frustration. Always keep a consistent way of commenting. For this file, you can get a, an idea that for the main headings, I have used asterisks and then I have used forward slashes for subsequent videos. I have made a detailed video on different types of comments and if you want to watch it, click on the icon in the upper right hand corner of this video. Consistently use variables and label names. Always use a consistent style of naming variables. We will soon have a video on different styles of writing variable names and that is something we are going to discuss in future. For now. Just understand that they should be consistent. If you have log variables, then you might want to start them with ln. Or if you have standardized variables, then you might want to store them with a std prefix or suffix. Also, it is not necessary that you label variables in the start. You can label them at the end of the project or you might only label variables that you are going to use for regression or summary statistics output. Quietly use quietly. The quietly command is used to run a command without generating any output in the output window of Stata. So when you use the quietly command before any command, that command would run but it wouldn't generate any output in output window. Sometimes we don't want an output in the log file and we can use the quietly command for that purpose. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon. 
you would receive a notification as soon as we post a video. Also, let us know in the comment box below if you are interested in some specific task or a specific topic, we would try to come up with the video.